So you're going to have to bear with me on some of this video because the room itself is only a little over 10 foot by 7 foot, so getting a good shot was pretty hard. But when I got everything to the house, the first thing I did was I took that base and I leveled it where the built-in was going and placed shims underneath the spots that needed shims. Then I brought um, some 3 quarter inch plywood scraps and I put those all over the base as little feet. This was on a carpet, so I ended up putting a lot more of these than I would if there was hardwood. And then I just checked to make sure it didn't rock, and that's what it looks like finished. Once that base was level, I took the first corner uh, cabinet and put it on the base. And then I attached that edge frame that's detachable so that it could be scribed to the wall and put that on. I took a quarter inch shim because I was scribing this a quarter inch off and I just ran the shim along the wall and marked on the cabinet with the pencil and that's what was going to give me the line for where I was going to cut it. Once I had that line I was going to cut it with a circular saw so I put a little piece of tape on it just so I didn't uh, tear up the wood. Then once that was cut, I just hammered it onto the piece to check for fit, and you could see in that video that there was no no gaps or anything between the built-in and the wall. So once I had a good fit, I had to plane it a little bit even after I cut it, and then once I had a good fit, I put some glue on that spline, hammered it into place, and then set it with um, some two and a half inch finishing nails all the way up and bottom of the case, and then I could slide it flush to the wall and start attaching it to the studs. I didn't show that process with this first video, but before I put the case up against the wall, I found where the studs are behind the case and marked down those measurements so I could transfer them to the inside of the case once it was in place. So since there's a little lip on the face frame for these cabinets, I marked those measurements for the wall on the front of the cabinet and then measured from behind the lip to where that mark is to get the new measurement because it's about a three quarters of an inch shorter than the measurement you have from the wall. Once I had that, I transferred it to the back of the cabinet and was able to countersink and um, attach it to the wall with two and a half inch screws. Then I could put that second case in place and this one there's an outlet in the back so I just measured from the edge of the first case where that outlet is, made a mark, it's kind of hard to see in that fit that video and then just cut it out with the jigs. The process for the second case is easier because you don't have to um, scribe that edge to the wall. So just to make sure everything was tight I put some C-clamps connecting the two pieces and then I screwed in screws into that second into the first case with those uh, holes that I had from before when they were outside my shop. Once the two cases were screwed together, I used the same process to mark where the studs are in the back of the case and then used those two and a half inch screws to attach the second case to the wall as well. Before I put that third case in place, I uh, found and marked out the rest of the studs for this wall. Once I have those marks on the wall, that's when I could take a measurement off of the edge of that cabinet and write down what it is for transferring it to the third cabinet when it's in place. I attach this third cabinet to the second cabinet just like I did for the second cabinet to the first cabinet, and then I also put the fourth cabinet in there and attached it as well. Screwing each one to the previous one using those holes that were already in there from when I dry fitted it. With that fourth cabinet in place, you can't really take it off and move it to scribe that edge to it. So what I did was I put that fourth cabinet in place, attached it to the third cabinet, and then I went up the wall with my tape measure, and every 12 inches or so I took a measurement, and then transferred those measurements to the edge of my face frame board. Once I had all those marks, I took a straight edge and drew a line on that board, and that was what I used to cut. Unfortunately, this is the best footage I have of attaching that second scribe face frame in the corner. So after I put all the marks on the edge and made my straight edge, I just cut it 
with my saw outside, which is why I don't have footage of any of these cuts, and then um, hammered it in place and attached it just like the, uh, the scribe face frame from the first cabinet. With all the cases in place, I cut a piece of crown molding for the top, as well as I cut a piece of molding and coped the edges for the bottom. Those cases sit right up to the edge of that base, so that molding covers the base and you can nail it right into it. Because this was built to be taken apart, there's a seam where all the cases meet. So to cover that seam and add a little bit of style to the built-in, I got some really thin half-inch molding, uh, round-over molding, and cut them and put them in between the seams, and they would be painted later to match the built-in. I just attached those with some brads. And then I had to do some touch-ups because you get your fingerprints all over these things when you're installing them. And then this is the finished built-in. There were two desks that also went along with this and a filing cabinet. I'll have a video of me building the file cabinet later down the line. And once again, there's the second desk. That's going to be a computer desk. And the desk on the other side was a desk for the kids to do their homework. That's the inside of the drawers. Filing cabinet. And the photos, I just couldn't get the whole thing in at once, so that's one side. And then the other side, the built-in and the space. 